This is Nursing Uncensored. I'm your host, Adrienne Benning, and I invite you to listen in on conversations I've had with real nurses about the crazy and wonderful lives we lead. This podcast is meant to create laughter in addition to serious discussion, and nothing is off limits. We're always honest, but we're not always safe for work. Please listen responsibly. Welcome to Nursing Uncensored. I am back today with a really fun show, a really great guest. We are going to talk today with Faith Lynch. She is a registered nurse who holds a master's degree in nursing leadership and is currently pursuing her doctor's of nursing practice degree at Chamberlain University School of Nursing. She has worked in nephrology nursing for 15 years in both the chronic dialysis setting and acute hospital dialysis setting, dealing with patients that span from acute kidney injury to end stage kidney disease. Faith is very active in the American Nephrology Nurses Association on both the local and national level. Her current national role with the ANNA includes being chair of the Specialty Practice Network as of May and has held previous national roles as the Acute Care Specialty Practice Network leader. On a local level, she is the current ANNA chapter president for Long Island and she completes that role this month. I am very excited to welcome her, and we're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff today. So, Faith, welcome to Nursing Uncensored. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Of course. We've got so much to talk about. It's early in the morning, but I'm really excited. So um, I'm going to drink a little coffee while we chat, and uh, yeah, let's get rolling. So where are you talking to us from today? Are you in Long Long Island? I am on Long Island in Nassau County. I'm actually at work right now, but sitting in my office peacefully. Nice. So hopefully nobody bothers me. If they do, we just, we'll say hi to them. We'll bring them on the show. (laughs) Yeah, right. It's like, everyone come on in. (laughs) So got a great idea of what you do uh, for your job and your activity activities and your roles. Tell us a little bit about you. Like what, what makes you tick? Like, I think you're a mom. Is that right? I've seen you've got got three little ones, three little ones. I have an almost eight year old and then a set of boy girl twins that are five and a half. So they keep me going. Uh, No doubt. No doubt. So pretty much all I do is work and go home and take care of my kids and my husband. You work and then you go home and work and then you go to work. Yeah, pretty much. And I try to like fit some sleep in between that. So, you know, (laughs) sleep. What's that? Hmm? I know I haven't had sleep in (laughs) God, years. But it sounds like you're killing it. It sounds like you're doing a lot of great stuff. So um, now we have a lot of students and a lot of like pre-nursing folks that listen to the show. So will you give us the like super brief, like hemodialysis 101. So people kind of know what we're talking about. Sure. So hemodialysis is a procedure. It's actually the only invasive procedure where a nurse is carrying out the procedure and a physician isn't present. So that's kind of what makes us so special. Um, We're cleaning and filtering the blood because the kidneys aren't working. So we're kind of like, I always say, you know, we're not Jenny Craig because the patients are like, can you take off all this fluid? And I'm like, you know, there's other reasons why we're doing this. You know, it's not just about the fluid. It's about the toxins in your body. It's kind of like a little gist of what we're doing, really. Sure. Yeah. And I know that if you guys weren't to do that, like if people don't receive hemodialysis, like if they basically their kidneys aren't working, if they don't receive hemodialysis, all these toxins build up in their body and it can essentially lead to a lot of problems, yeah. including like it could potentially kill people because the kidneys yeah. are not filtering all of the stuff that the kill the the kidneys, the, yeah, the kidneys, the kidneys normally filter out of the body that you would normally pee out of your body. Yeah. Um, So most of these patients urinate in the beginning, but then they stop urinating over a period of time. So they, they become anuric and they don't, you know, urinate. So they have to have dialysis, but um, if they don't get a transplant dialysis is most of the, probably 95% of the time forever. There's very few patients that recover, but it depends if it's an acute kidney injury, they'll, recover if it's not it's a chronic you know then it's they're on it for life unless they get a transplant 
And so you were working in New York at the heart of like, I'm just going to kind of jump right in because yeah. the big thing that we're here to talk about, we're here to talk about kind of your achievements and your goals overall. Yeah. But one of the big things you're responsible for is working during the height of the COVID pandemic in, um, in New York, like when this yeah. spiked and was crazy as hell. Like I can't even imagine, like we had a, you know, we've had spikes here in Iowa, but it's been nothing like it was there for you guys in, in New York. So yeah, it was rough. Yeah. You want to talk it's like a, a big bit? blur? Um, yeah. God, I can only imagine. My yeah. God. So, you know, New York, we were like considered like the epicenter. I was actually just coming home from Disney world with my kids and I like literally got off the plane, came to work and never left for six weeks. So I didn't go home. I went home on like Sundays and my husband was like, don't come in the house. And I was like, can I see my family? He's like, don't come in the house. He has cystic fibrosis. So he was like this. He was like, don't even oh, come man. in the house. I work with CF patients. They are highly yeah. susceptible to infection. Yeah. He was like, no. I was like, are we married anymore? I just got like goosebumps. I'm, I'm yeah. like a goosebumper. Like you talk about yeah. stuff like that. And I just like instantly goosebump. I just got total chills. All yeah. He was like, life. you're not allowed to step foot in the house. If he could have sprayed me with Lysol, if he could find it, he would have, <laughs> he would have been like spraying me as, you know, I was going, but yeah, it was crazy here. Um, I don't think in the beginning they realized that all these patients were going to have AKI. So it was just insane. That's and it was a say. high level of people that were having kidney dysfunction. It was like 80% in the beginning. I mean, my hospital was literally completely full. So the old, there was only two units that were not COVID units. That was my dialysis unit. And cause we weren't negative pressure and we were like, don't make us negative pressure. Cause it was like the only place we can go to kind of like not inhale COVID is I guess what you could say. Mm -hmm. um, and then a few of the, I think the ambulatory surgery unit for my whole hospital was COVID and they made beds. Like the basement turned into like ICUs. I mean, they had tents everywhere. It was crazy. Like, yeah. I know we converted a bunch of our um, units to ICUs, but it wasn't like the yeah. whole hospital. Like we made, you know, negative air pressure rooms and we made like the floors below our ICUs became ICUs, but it wasn't like a whole hospital, like tenting. The and whole hospital. God. I and can't. it's just, you felt bad because you had these meds. So dialysis is in acute dialysis. Like we're ACLS and, you know, mm -hmm. tele-trained. So we're kind of like in the middle of, tele and ICU level of care nurses, you know, cause we do so much of our dialysis in the ICUs. Mm -hmm. So we learn like, all right, this one needs levo up the levo. You need some blood pressure to do dialysis. You need hemodynamics. And I felt bad because these med surge nurses got like six hours of critical care training and they were thrown into a now ICU. So here we're walking in like, all right, like we can't do this. And they're like, I don't know. I've never seen a vent before. So, but I mean, they all did a great job, but it was like such a high pressure time. And you and guys were really... 18 hour days. I mean, I was cross trained in ICU and I was like, please don't make me go to ICU. I know. Don't make me go to ICU. Like yeah. every day I came to work, I was like, oh God, it's today the day. It's today the day. The, the amount of stress and pressure of just the possibility was intense and like I've interviewed people who were pulled from like clinic work to yeah. go I did an episode with my friend Macy who was pulled out of the clinic she hadn't worked on an inpatient unit in like months and she was like thrown into one of the like new ICUs and so yeah the stress of that like oh. we pulled a lot of um chronic dialysis nurses from the chronic you know from the chronic setting we were like we need you over here because we were just so busy because you, you think we had to put do we have to do patients at the bedside yeah. so here you have the nurses that are limiting their exposure in the bed like in the room so they're only going in if they have to and like here we are in dialysis like sitting in the room for like five hours with this patient you know and like they're hacking away and we're like oh my god like we don't even know what this really is at the time you know mm -hmm. and so you're like, like you guys have there. fun out there we're gonna we're gonna sit in here with them for four hours but so what, what kind of stuff was like going through? I mean, what, what's like going through your head as you're like, just kind of chilling in these rooms. You're just kind of, you know, we were literally on, we have these things called rovers. They're like iPhones that have Epic on them. Mm -hmm. We were just like texting each other. Like, what are we doing? Like, but I have to say like my hospital was great. We had PPE. We never ran out of PPE. 
oh, and wow. dialysis had, you know, they made sure that we had N95s and shields and all that kind of stuff. So we were protected where some areas weren't, you know, you saw it on the news, like some hospitals in certain areas, they didn't give their nurses PPE or they were running out or they didn't have anything. Yeah. Like the trash bag headlines we were seeing, like nurses putting on trash bags instead of ice. Garbage. Yes. Yeah. The gowns yeah. did turn into like plastic black garbage bags practically, but Hey, it was something. Yeah. Yeah. But, oh, you know, God. Yeah, yeah. But when you're like, but uh, I just, like we, my hospital was fortunate. Like they were rationing, you know, they were like, you have yeah. to, you have to ask. And we were like, uh, sterilizing our N95s and things like that. Yeah, they were recycling them. them, I think as well here. You got yeah. one a week, mm. you got one, unless it broke or, you know, it was really moist, but yeah, we got like one a week. Shit's scary, man. I know. Like, I'm, I'm really glad you didn't get sick. I and... didn't. I only had two nurses get sick. And that was like, literally like the first week that it all when you're still figuring it all out and like, yeah. So I think they probably got it, you know, before it really, you know, filled yeah. up the hospital, yeah. but yeah. So these dialysis machines you guys are using, I know the dialysis, the portable machines that we have in my hospital, they're huge. They're like massive. Yeah. yeah they're so... the, probably the Fresenius ones. Yeah. We have those as well. Yeah. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about the logistics of things because- okay. Because then we're going to talk about your, your innovation, the things that you, awesome. the tableau, is it the tableau, tableau, ta- tableau, tableau. Okay. It's a pretty so, nifty machine. Yeah. So let's talk about this. First, let's talk about like old machine, like traditional, or I don't know what the right word is. Like yeah. So they're like dialysis traditional machines. conventional dialysis machines. So there's a whole bunch. There's Fresenius, there's Braun, there's, um, I think that's really it. Fresenius and Braun are the, like the two popular ones, but most people have Presidious and they're these like really big machines and you need like a portable RO, which is like a reverse osmosis for the water that attaches to it in order to filter the water that goes to the patient. So it's gotta be safe. And they're just large. And they're probably to push around the hospital like over 200 pounds. Yeah. So we have those here too. We got a whole bunch before COVID hit and then I've always wanted the tableaus, but they were always, they're like the BMW dialysis machine, you know? So getting a hospital to be like, Hey, I'm going to spend, you know, double the price on these machines was difficult. But when COVID hit, I was like, guys, this is the time. Now is nail it. I nailed it. It was like perfect because we couldn't fit all of, like, we tried to like, um, we started cohorting patients on the floors we were doing one-to-one bedside nursing and that takes a lot of manpower and we had a lot of AKI patients so we were running and running to just dialyze these patients that had hyperkalemia so you know um so we couldn't fit four of those machines and four of those portable ROs in one room so I was like guys listen the tableau it's the time this is the time to get them I'm like they're small they're like tabletop they look like a little mini fridge <laughs> and they Compared have compared to system. like this 200 pound yeah. beast yes their tabletop like it's you know they have the portable ro system underneath the machine have you seen a picture of them i have yeah yeah Aren't I, they, I awesome? looked at them. they look amazing i'm like oh this is like compared yeah. to the beast that they push around that you can yeah. hear it like coming down the hall like this yeah like, thing that you you're like i hear a dialysis machine coming. you're like I'm move like, out of the way we're coming yeah like that's <laughs> you know it's like you're going into icu and you're like can you move your vent please i need to dial it <laughs> yeah can you rearrange this? Can whole you room? rearrange the whole room, please? Because we need to move in here. Yeah. Hopefully they don't code because you're not getting in. Yeah, you're not. You, you No, <laughs> you're not. You're not getting near that bed. But um, yeah, so I said to them, I'm like, I called my directors, my medical director, my nursing director. And I was like, why don't we do the tableaus? I'm like, they're small. I'm like, you can use them for multiple modalities. So you could do chemo. You could do extended therapy which is like more like a continuous renal replacement therapy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you could do home dialysis with them as well. So, you know, it's like a bang for your buck almost. Mm-hmm. And the hospital was like, all right, awesome. All the inpatient units in the network got them. So yeah, it was pretty awesome. I was like, this is sweet. I mean, you know, 
obviously COVID was not a, not a good thing in any way, shape or form, but something, you know, if we can count the things that, that came out of this, that are good, this is one of those things that now you guys have these machines that are smaller, portable, I imagine more efficient. They can do all these different things. Um, Will you give just like a brief little rundown? Cause like I said, I know a little bit about hemodialysis, but I don't understand it completely because I'm not an HD nurse and I know that there are students that are listening that are like hungry for the basics so I know we like filter it in and out we, you know patients usually have a fistula like um artery vein that kind mm-hmm. of like works together so you're essentially like pulling the blood out yeah filtering it putting it back Getting in. back yep so the machine essentially like filters the blood, separates out the products that, I mean, you, you explain it. I'm just guessing here. So the machine actually has, um, what's called a dialyzer, which is that long piece that acts as the kidney. So pretty much you're pulling the blood, you're cleaning it. It hits the dialyzer, it filters, and then it returns the clean blood to the patient. Um, it removes toxins, it removes waste, And then you're also removing fluid at the same time. So everything that your kidneys do, that machine is doing. And we can change different settings on the machine. You can change the sodium level, the bicarb level, how much fluid they're removing. And then most of the time, the treatments are about three and a half to four hours to do that three to four times a week. Sure. And then you can do extended slower rate. Yes. That's for more of the critically ill population. So it's continuous renal replacement therapy or kidney therapy. Now they call it. Um, and that's like between 24 to 72 hours. And it's just just more gentle, very gentle. Cause it's for those patients that are on like three to four pressors that really are not hemodynamically stable. So So you just don't want to be pulling off fluid really fast and like those mega shifts in like, and it's not always the fluid in those patients. It's more the electrolyte balance. Mm -hmm. So like if we have a patient that comes in and they're hyperkalemic and their, you know, K is 7.2, you can't throw them on CRRT or extended therapy. You have to dialyze them first because we dialyze down the potassium and then they'll go on that therapy. Sure, sure. So wow. it's a very careful balance. Very which careful. Is why it's so important you guys understand hemodynamics because if you all of a sudden and you know even as a you know as a floor nurse I have to understand that if my patients just come back from HD we have to be really careful about like their blood pressure if we're like getting them out of bed or something after HD we have to be careful that they're not gonna like go orthostatic and like all of a sudden that patient's passing out and they're falling on the floor because they had a lot of fluid pulled off all of a sudden hopefully their fistula doesn't start bleeding yeah yeah so there's a lot to consider and so yeah it can it can be dangerous if we're not paying attention to what's actually happening with their fluid volume status their their lights all of that so um yeah you guys have a really important Uh, important job. You've got to really pay attention and know what you're doing. Um, I really just think that they touch so um, minimal on kidneys and dialysis in nursing school. Yeah. So I feel like it doesn't really give people the option of under like nursing students, the option of understanding what the specialty really is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I kind of just came out of nursing school. I was an LPN first and I just applied and dialysis is what I got. And I was like, Oh, all right, you know, I guess I'll try it. And I fell in love with it because it's a very different specialty, you know? So, um, yeah. And the kidneys are really amazing and they do. They're important. They affect everything. If you have kidney issues, you have heart issues, you have vascular issues. I mean, they really are associated with everything. Mm -hmm. I have a patient recently who had a really intense um, acute kidney injury after surgery, and he was just starting to produce urine again. And every time he peed in the urinal, he was like, give me credit for that. Make sure you record that. Like every drop I want, that's gold. That's liquid gold to me. He was so proud that he was peeing. And I was like, look, I know how important this is. The only time you appreciate it is when you can't do it. You know, we were like cheering him on. We were like, we got 300 a urine. Like, you know, it was like a little celebration every time he peed. So, um, that, that shit's really important to people. It is. Yeah. Cause you think it's like another full-time job for them when they go on dialysis. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, three to three to four times a week for people. And then what, what'd you say? Like three to four hours at a time. I mean, that's, 
that's like a lot of time people spend plus the commute to and from if there's yeah. someone that doesn't have access to transportation securing that transportation that's a big deal in people's lives that's um, that's why they need to do home therapies yes it's which a is a huge push mm -hmm. for home therapies yeah you can do peritoneal dialysis or home hemodialysis absolutely you know? yeah so this is um this tableau is like a big deal in general, not just because of the inpatient setting, but like the fact, so how does that work? Like, you know, cause obviously this is like an expensive device. Do you rent these out to people? Are these like, what's the. We own them here. So mm -hmm. during COVID we bought them. So for the three hospitals, we bought 12 of them. I have five. Um, but we're actually going to be getting more cause we're going to um, put them in our home hemo in the chronic. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be the machines for home dialysis as well. Nice. The technology on these machines are amazing. Yeah, That's what sets it apart. You know, like we're in a technology era now, like it's all about that. And they definitely surpass with technology. So this is like the future. Of it dialysis. is. It's really, I mean, it's really like a nifty thing. I have to say, I love it. Yeah. So um, you found the tableau at a conference, right? Yeah. Like you were yeah. one of the A and A national symposiums. Yeah, they were there. And I was like, and I think it was like three to four years ago. So it was still kind of new. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, we have a really small unit. I don't know in your hospital, like our unit's like the size of a closet. It's really small. It's a six bedded unit, but it's small, especially with all the equipment that we have. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is perfect. We were redoing the unit. And I was like, I wouldn't need a you know, a portable RO for every machine. And they were like, all right, maybe. And I was like, okay. And then when COVID hit, I was like, guess what? This is my, this is what I want. And I got it. And it was awesome. So I have only ever been to like maybe a couple conferences in my five years as a nurse. And the first one that I went to was like a big conference. I went to the National Cystic Fibrosis Conference. I got to go when uh, it was in Orlando. Yeah, I feel like we're connected. We are. Yeah. The CF yeah. population is like so close to my heart. Like my husband and his two sisters, they yeah. all have it. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, CF is like, we're in an era now where like people with CF are live far outliving. The, I, there go the goosebumps again. I like, know. A f like even just a few decades ago, the life expectancy for people with CF was like, I mean, back in like the fifties and sixties, it was like childhood. Then it's like pushed up into like teenager, early twenties. Now, like I'm taking care of people with CF that are like in their thirties, forties, fifties. So like, you know, the, the life expectancy and quality of life for people, especially now that like medications like Trikafta are available. That's what my husband's on. Trikafta, yes. Uh, and you know what? Lydica. Oh my God. Yeah. And, um, like patients that have started Trikafta and oh my God, it came out like right before COVID it hit. So yeah. thank God I've had patients that are like, I haven't had to be in the hospital during COVID, but anyway, so I got to go to the CF conference, like my first year as a nurse, I got really lucky. And so it was in this huge conference center and I walked in the first day to like the big area where they had like all of the vendors and like, it was like, I don't know. I felt like it was like shopping for like, um, fantasy land for healthcare providers. Like yeah. you walk in like the first, the first booth I remember going up to was like, sorry. And this is just a little aside. We will yeah. get back on topic. But the first thing that I saw, you know, I'm used to like taking my patients their enzymes, uh, when they're getting like their, their, um, enteral feedings or like their supplemental feedings, or even when they're just eating their meals and they have to take like these huge, like enzymes, yeah. these giant capsules so that they can properly digest their, their food. Well, these tube feed, um, they have these um, little, they're like little um, vials that you connect in to the tube feeds, like that connect oh, that's cool. between their like gastro button, their gastro tubes and the actual like tubes for the tube feeds and the enzymes are built into the filter so that as the food passes through the tube, it like goes, like it picks up the enzymes oh, so that cool. people don't have to actually like swallow these honking pills. Yeah. My husband's on big pills. They're yeah. Looking, but yeah. I saw that and I was like, that, that's so cool. Like that's, <laughs> 
And so the whole room, it was this big conference room and it was just filled with all these vendors that were like, we have these cool inventions and like, you know, stuff that my hospital didn't have and stuff that I was just like, I never thought of that. Like, it was just a room full of like, just cool stuff. And you get free stuff and it's the best. I'll take one of these. I'll take one of these. Yeah. They're like, would you like a free mug? Like, would you like a mug with a straw? Like it has our brand name on it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I guess my point is, is that not only when you go to these conferences, do you get like bags of free loot and like cool stuff, but you get to see all of these things that are like new technology, new innovations, like new products. And then you get to go back to your leadership and be like, Hey, I got this pamphlet for this thing. Like, um, you know, I've seen, um, supplements, like, you know, not the insurers of the world, but like, or maybe I shouldn't say their name, but not like, you know, the major like commercial nutritional supplements, but like plant-based, like vitamin rich supplements that are made by small companies that want to like do right by their, um, you know, by their, their client base or their patient base. So it's just like, you can go to these conferences and see these things that are like new innovations, new technology. And I totally geek out over stuff like that. Me too. I'm a total geek with that stuff. For sure. And then I, I've gone to smaller conferences, like more local, like symposiums and conferences. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing. They have like this little hallway or this little area where there's like all these vendors and they're like, you're a nurse, you work with this population. I want to tell you about this thing that we invented that we think your patients are going to love. And sometimes it's like, yeah, well, that doesn't really sound like my patients would like that. But then you come across a table and you're like this. So was that kind of like the experience that you had with Tableau? You were like, who would have thought that a machine, like, I feel like dialysis machines get bigger over time and they never (laughs) get smaller, you know? So when I saw it, I was like, this is awesome. And I'm like a big techie person, you know, I mean, I grew up with technology. So for me, I'm like, all right, this is great. And it was just like, you wouldn't know that it's a dialysis machine because the screen folds down, the top goes over it. So I feel like patients, when they see these big machines, they're like, what is that? You know, you're going to hook me up to that. And then you see this little dainty machine and you're like, oh, looks like a little so cute. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's so kind of scary. How it went. Yeah. Yeah. But. Cause if you drove in this machine, that's like, you know, like the wheel it, it's like on hydraulics because it's yeah. so heavy that otherwise you would never be able to move. We don't even thing. have those here. The hydraulic, they have them. I saw that actually at a conference too. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is great. But then it makes it so long and you're like mm-hmm. it's so long and you have this dialysis machine and like the patient's like way up there and you're like, I can't get to the catheter. Mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So yeah. It's super tiny. So, um, yeah, the, the point I want to drive home is that going to these con and I don't have to convince you because you're already a member of the, the ANNA, right? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So you're already involved in these conferences, but this can be a great source of things that actually become reality in your practice. Um, yeah. and so, you're already like completely convinced about like joining nursing associations and yeah, you have to, you know, they really, um, build leaders, you know what I'm saying? And if you want to be a change agent, you have to be involved in it. I mean, a and a, I have to say like, they obviously serve nephrology nurses, but you know, they educate the non-nephrology nurse as well. I mean, cause a lot, you got to think when you go to the hospital, a lot of the floor nurses don't really understand dialysis you know and if they don't they just know the basics they need their blood pressure meds yeah right yep me so, that's me <laughs> yeah so um but you seem to have a little bit more knowledge than, a l- yeah a little but um you know they have educational materials like you know they really promote education that everyone understands you know so I just feel like you should be a part of it you know it's Especially as a new, I mean, you know, a lot of people are like, well, I don't really know much. I'm a new nurse. That's the time to get involved. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm one of those people that is like, this is the time to get involved. You may not know much. Like I felt really silly because some of the vendors were like, how many cystic fibrosis patients do you have in your, in your, at your hospital? Like how many work with your program? And I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't know. (laughs) 
I just started. But then when I just admitted to that, like, I'm a new nurse, I'm not really sure. I'm just getting my feet wet. By the way, they just started mowing my lawn. So I can't even hear it. Okay, good. All right. Excellent. Um, But, uh, you know, but that's okay if you're new and you don't know how many people are involved in the program at your hospital. Like, be honest about that. Be like, I'm new. I'm here to absorb. I'm here to learn. Um, Because I feel like the amount of stuff that I learned at these conferences, plus it's just fun. You get it. You get to interact with people. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I was a little intimidated by the size of the national CF conference, but like looking back, I'm like, I got picked to go to this like huge conference and I learned so much the lectures that I went to. And I mean, I feel like it made a huge difference in my practice. And then I was able to go back to my floor and be like, oh yeah, I totally learned about this. Like, you know, and I was able to share what I learned and, um, it, it enriched my, my practice, my knowledge and what I was able to share with my patients. And so um, just reading some of the things that I read about you and your practice and your involvement, um, it made me think, and I'm, you know, I'm, it's the cat's not out of the bag is the time that we're recording this, but by the time this comes out, it will be well known that I'm, I'm moving to a new state, getting involved with a new hospital network. Yeah. And so I'm like, I've got a whole new set of things to get involved with. And so yeah. you have um, to be involved and it's you intimidating, but yeah, but that's how you learn. That's how you meet new people. That's how you potentially find the specialty that you knew nothing about right. that you're and suddenly in love part- with. Is when you're yeah. at a conference and you're like, you feel like what you're going through at work or what you're doing is just you. And then you're like, oh my God, everyone's going through this. Yeah. Everyone's doing this or yeah. things that don't work for you, you know, for you guys may work for somebody else. And then you just learn new things. And what would have happened? And, you know, theoretically, what would have happened to all those COVID patients with AKI, 80% of patients with AKI, if you had never gone to that conference years ago, never seen the tableau, never struck when the iron was hot and said to your leadership, we need these machines for our patients. I had them in two weeks, two weeks, they were delivered. And I was like, (laughs) oh my God, this is great. And the the company that makes the, um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I just followed them on Instagram. I thought I found their account. I have to say they work for their, um, customers yeah like you know like you feel like there's a lot of these reps and companies and they're like oh you do it your way you know do it our way like any like when we first got the machines you know we learned honestly in between dialyzing COVID patients so it was like all right you do, you learn it in an hour you learn it in an hour and it's very it's like on an eighth grade level to set up the machine like probably lower my eight-year-old could probably do it <laughs> um so it's you know super simple but anything that we ran into problems with, they changed. Like what company does that? Like in four, three to four months, it was like, here, we upgraded it. All of the issues that you guys are having is now changed. Oh, yeah. Like they always want your feedback. And I think that's what makes them so special, you know? Yeah. So it was, they're really great to like work with and we've had a blast with them. Well, you have to have that responsiveness because every hospital is going to have different needs. You know, your patient population is going to have different needs. And so you need that kind of responsiveness because what my patients here in Iowa are going to need is not the same as what your patients on Long Island are going to need. Yeah. Um, And so there has to be that level of like willingness to work. So that's good to hear. That's really good to hear. So I used to work in a clinic like back when I was like 18, 19 years old. And the impression that we had of some of the reps that would come in was kind of sleazy. You know, we felt like they were kind of working us a little bit. Like, um, I remember, uh, (laughs) I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but they brought us all of these, um, uh, like swag with like the name of their product on it. Yeah. And then we took, we were like sitting at the front desk, like eating the candy they brought us. And then we noticed that one of the uh, labels, one of the icons of their product name, we like peeled away the sticker and it was uh, covering up the logo of a different competing product name. And we were like, 
Really? Are they reusing? Oh, that's just gross. Pre- and we were like, oh, come on now. And immediately we were like, sleazy, that's sleazy. So that was kind of, and I was like 18 at the time. So I was yeah. like, oh, that, so that put this like bad taste in my mouth. So now that like I work in nursing, I've had, um, uh, experiences that have totally changed my mind where they're like, we want your patients to be safe. We want yeah. your patients to have uh, quality care. Like, because, you know, now they realize you don't come back if you're getting, you know, crappy care, if you're having adverse re- events. Right. So like there are companies now that have much more integrity, much more, um, they want you to have good outcomes. Um, it's not that whole like smoke and mirrors. We're just going to cover this up with a sticker and hope they don't notice. Um, right. I get what you're saying. Like, and I think that outset, um, well, the tableau machine, like it was made to like simplify everything, you know, like it was designed to simplify the whole procedure in itself, you know? Yeah. So that's like, and it's very, um, how do I explain it? So when we do a setup, for example, we have to test the machine now they have like this running like scenic video like so you're testing this machine and you're looking at the mountains you're looking at the pond (laughs) you're watching bears jump through like it's like really cool that's nice time go by faster so it's not just that the machine does what it's supposed to do it gives you like an experience yeah Yeah. absolutely it's in the details sometimes you know it is um yeah. Totally. And and technology is getting so good that it's like why shouldn't this be form and function, you know? I think um, the water treatment like the water treatment thing did it for me where like the water treatment system is like underneath the machine. So it's like, well, why do you need the rest of this if you have this? Yeah, I saw something that said that you don't have to haul like these giant diacetylate no, bags. Nothing. I've seen those bags. Those bags, it's like you're you're lifting weights. Yeah. Oh yeah, for those extended therapy ones, the CRH. Yeah. yeah. When we did that here, so we were actually the first hospital to successfully do a 24-hour therapy with the Tableau. Oh, nice. So we did a patient, you know, two days in a row. So we did like a 48-hour treatment. And the ICU nurses were like, don't we have to like change bags? And I'm like, nope, you just have this jug and this jug and it lasts 24 hours. And they were like, that's it. You're like, like, yeah. were like, <laughs> we don't have to like, you know, change the, the bags. And I'm like, nope, you're not calling down to pharmacy. You're using a bicarbon and acid and you're done. And they were like, oh, so they were like amazed. They were amazed, but they were also like probably a little nervous. Like, you know, it was very simple. They actually yeah. didn't like them. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I imagine that also takes up less resources in the hospital because, like you said, you're not calling the pharmacy. You're not waiting for the pharmacy to prepare stuff. Yeah. Um, you're not it's tying cheaper. up. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's having like this kind of chain. I almost said chainsaw. It's having this like domino effect yeah. um, where you're not tying up resources. It's like, all yeah um I think that this is the way a lot of technology needs to be in the hospital where we're simplifying we're finding ways to like not utilize all of these extra resources just to make like one one process um just making it so that the nurses and the nursing staff and all of the support staff are not having to do like 10 steps when it could be like two yeah, this is like two steps. You literally like drop the cartridge in, hook up the baths and the dialyzer, and then it kind of, it's the setup is different. So for example, for like CRRT, the ICU nurses right now, it takes them 45 minutes to set up that machine. Once they get the bags, this takes them 15 minutes. Nice. So it's, it's much different. God, you know? what you could do with that extra 30 minutes, what you could you do with your more time for patient care. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's important. And it's yeah. a safe machine. It's got like 70 sensors. Like it's a super sensitive machine, but in a good way. Yeah. You know? So it's, it's, uh, it's paying attention to all the little details. Every that, little detail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It won't really, it won't let like an adverse, like if there's air, it like automatically is like air alarm and like shuts the, the machine down. And like, so like, you know what I'm saying? There's just a lot of really cool features. Nice. Yeah. So, wow. My- <laughs> and you can I, remote uh... monitor the patient. Yeah. 
Yeah. So we used that during COVID because after a while, my nurses were like, why do we have to sit in the rooms for four hours? So then you're not risking the exposure of nurses. Right. Next so, you know, a lot of them were nervous. Some of them were like, whatever. And then some of them were like nervous and I get it. Like I was the same way. I have a husband at home that I don't want to get sick. Mm-hmm. So what I was able to do was put, you know, go in the room, set the patient up, go on to Tableau hub, which is like their little website. And I could actually monitor the machine from outside the room. Nice. Which is, you can see everything, that's everything, happening. every pressure on the machine, which is what we have to do for dialysis. We mm-hmm. monitor the pressures of the access and stuff, blood pressures. It's really cool. That's pretty awesome. So what, are, what, where do I, all the questions? I'm like all the questions at once. This happens to me sometimes when I'm really excited. So, um, nurses that want to get involved with dialysis. So like you were saying, we don't get a lot of training about this with, um, a lot of education on this in nursing school, especially I went through an ADN program initially. Uh Um, and so this, you know, we do, um, renal stuff, renal GI, GU kind of combined, and it's like a very quick, quick lesson. And then of course, in our fundamentals class, it's kind of like all worked in together, Uh but hemodialysis and, um, even peritoneal dialysis, like it's a very quick blip in our education. So a lot of nurses come out thinking, probably how you did, like you got a job in dialysis and you're like, yeah, okay, whatever. It's cool. But, um, what's some advice that you have for nurses who maybe do have an interest in the specialty? Like, how do you, what are some source resources for nurses who maybe want to educate themselves a little more as they're getting into the specialty or just advice in general for being successful in this specialty? Do you have any, any words there for us? So I can say that right now, the American Nephrology Nurses Association is really focusing on, you know, trying to bring more student nurses, you know, they have student nurse memberships where you oh. get like comp, you can go to the conferences and learn more about it. And they just started this new program. It's called Win Way into Nephrology Nursing. So it's pretty much like a whole bunch of webinars where students can go on and like interact and learn of like what other nephrology nurses did in their career and how they got into it. Oh, cool. So it's really cool. And then they have um, other programs from novice to expert. And you could really just like learn about you know, nephrology. It's not just dialysis. Like everyone thinks, oh, it's just dialysis. Nephrology is like an umbrella term, I guess. You know, you have hemodialysis, you have peritoneal dialysis, you have transplant nephrology oh, nursing, yeah. mm-hmm. you have um, home dialysis options, you have um, education. Like there's so many different like areas of nephrology nursing. It's not just, di- and of course, you're going to learn dialysis, but right. you, know, you could be in a nephrology office and be an RN or an LPN and, you know, work in one of those areas as well. Yeah. And I, I do a lot of um, lung transplant. And so I'm just interested in transplant in general, but my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that um, kidney transplant is usually a pretty successful um, area of transplantation. Yeah. Um, and so that's a thing that can make a huge difference in quality of life because, you know, without kidney transplant dialysis is pretty much like, that's it. The You're th- doing the thing you gotta forever. do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like that's your commitment to life. And that can be, I mean, how do you keep a full-time job when you got to show up for dialysis three times a week? Like that's a People pretty, do, big... but that's, but that's we really hard. Have to push. Yeah. yeah, we really have to push the, you know, you can do this at home. And I think people are just scared to do it at home. For sure. And especially, you know, that's a big responsibility and it's still a big commitment. It's the same with, as you, you know, see every day with cystic fibrosis, like the treatments and the medications and making sure you're do every, doing everything correctly. It's, it's a big commitment and you need to do it if you want to feel good and you want to be healthy. Um, but it's, you know, it's a routine and some people stick to it really well and some people struggle with it, especially when you have, you know, demands of regular life, children and job and family. And, um, it can be, it can be a lot just to do those. It's stressful for like for the patients. It's it's super stressful. I have to say like people, well, nurses, and you may know this too, because you still probably know some dialysis patients, but 
CKD patients, so chronic kidney disease patients, are probably the most typical population to deal with. Mm-hmm. A lot of the nurses will be like, oh, I don't know how you guys deal with that population. They are difficult, but I have to say, I feel like being in dialysis, I really kind of, I came in as a nurse that was really quiet, you know, and then it like toughened me up a little bit because you're dealing with some crazy personalities, (laughs) you know, you're dealing with like the Jekylls and the Hydes and then you have these sweet people, you know, you're just dealing with so much. Yeah. So you really, really learn to be a people person. You have to be. And you're seeing these patients like chronically, you know, yeah. these are, these, you get to know them, you kind of, um, good or bad, you get to spend, mm-hmm. you get to spend a lot of time with them and hours at a time, you know, that's the best part is the relationships that you form. Yeah. Yeah. And I get that as well with chronic pulmonary patients, you know, you're seeing a lot of the same patients over and over again, good or bad. You know, we have some patients that were like, don't say their name or they'll show up. And yeah, there yeah. are also patients that, you know, you walk in the room and you're like, you're back. I'm glad to see you, but I'm not glad to see you. Hey. you no. Know? Um, yeah. so you have, you have a lot of different, um, experiences with these patients, but yeah, it's one of those specialties with Jen, um, you know, Jen med surge and that sort of thing. You see a lot of turnover. You don't necessarily get a lot of the same patients. I mean, some places maybe you do, but in our specialties, I feel like those relationships do get built and, um, good or bad, it's definitely a part of the job. So it's rewarding. I think it's I, such I a rewarding some... profession and specialty. You know, there's nothing like being like when I worked in the chronic unit, cause I started in the chronic unit before I came to the hospital, there's nothing like getting a phone call from a transplant coordinator being like, tell that patient to rinse them back. They need to come into the hospital to be able to go over and say, guess what? You have a kidney waiting for you at the mm-hmm. hospital right now. And like the patient doesn't know what to do. Like, it's like, you know, like, there's so many good things, Yeah, yeah. you know, and even just seeing them feel better, you know, yeah. they come in for their treatment and you can tell that they, maybe they had to wait a little longer for this treatment and they're, you know, they're really feeling the effects of having to wait. And all of a sudden you're like, okay, well, you know, let's get you feeling better. Let's get your treatment done. Let's get you, let's get you back in better shape and then you go about your life again, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I think, I think we get, we get pretty lucky in the jobs as frustrating as things can be. And as stressful as things can be in the hospital, I think we get lucky in our specialties sometimes. So, yeah. And I think it's good for nurse, like even nursing students to, you know, you come out of nursing school, you really don't know what you want to do. Like you, like I wanted to be an ER nurse. It didn't happen, but you know, I still came into a specialty that makes me feel like I'm running an ER half the time, you know, <laughs> yeah. because these patients are sick. So you're yeah. kind of getting like ER trauma, critical care, like all in, you know, all in one. So yeah. yeah. At one point I thought I wanted to be in ob Another point I was like, I'm going to be a neuro nurse. And now I'm like, Oh, I don't want to be a neuro nurse. You know, yeah. at one point I thought, Oh, float pool would be scary. And now I'm diving headfirst into a float pool job you never know what you're going to fall in love with and you never know how you're going to change over time. So it's worth it. Yeah. You never know what you're just going to be like, like a fish in water, you know? And I feel like you have definitely found that area from what I've been reading, what I've heard about you. It's like, you're really excelling in the space that you're in. So I think I also started from the bottom and I worked my way up. So I feel like I understand things a little differently because, you know, I learned the LPN role. I learned the staff RN role. Then I became the supervisor manager and then I came to the hospital. So I feel like I have a good overview, you know? So what do you think are some good tips or, or words of advice for people who do want to work their way through up into those leadership roles? Like what are your words of wisdom for those folks? I just, you have to really find, I think your passion first, you know, I was lucky. I walked into dialysis and ended up loving it, you know, and I know plenty of people that walked into it and didn't like it, you know, but I think you just have to like, keep understanding, keep educating yourself and just really follow your dreams, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And listen, listen, listen to your heart. If something's not for you, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. And I always put a hundred percent into what I was doing, you know, like building the relationships with my patients. And, you know, you build those relationships, 
they send really nice letters to your administration on how good of a job you're doing. So that does help. That's a yeah. positive. You know? For sure. For sure. Yeah. So. But it sounds like you're a wonderful nurse, really Thank dedicated. You. Yeah. I, uh, I hope to someday be in a place where I can say that I've, I've done the same. I found my niche and I've really worked my way into a place where I'm I'm making a, a really good difference. Mm, I know some I've, nurses like to move around to different departments. Yeah, yeah. So I'm hoping that the float pool is something that'll help me find the place where I want to yeah. find my like forever spot. Um, but yeah, I just, I, right now, I feel like I kind of love a little bit of everything. I want to be at the buffet of nursing and yeah. learn my way around this new place. Um, but then talking to people like you, I'm like, oh, there's got to be that specialty for me. There's got to be that place. Yeah. Um, I feel like the, fair, the, like the, the Disney princess that's like, there's got to be that, that special one for me, you know? Um, yeah. but, uh, I'm very excited that I got to talk to you. I was in anticipation of this. I was like reading articles um, oh, and there are, so fun. yeah, it's great. I was going to fan you. I was a little excited. bit. Yeah. Really and actually, I'm going to, I'm going to share those in the show notes and in the blog okay. post that I put on the website at nursing.com. So would you like to share social media, any kind of links you've got or anything that you would like people to check out? Um, I have my LinkedIn account, which I can send to you if you want. Sure, to and I'll link that in the show notes. Um, I want people to to check you out, and I'll link. I'll also link to um, the A and an A. I want you to link so that A and an A. Yes, nurse thing. Absolutely. Yes, and I didn't know about the um, the uh, what did you call it? The um, W I N. Yeah, way into nephrology nursing. Way into yeah. nephrology. So that might be of interest to the students. I get a uh, message messages from students all the time that are like, Hey, I didn't know about this. Thanks for sharing this. So I yeah. will definitely share that in the show notes. So go ahead, folks, if you're listening on like your commute or while you're doing whatever, check out the show notes at nursinguncensored.com. And there's going to be tons of information. I've got a list of links from uh, Faith that I'm going to share and Faith Faith Lynch, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Um, I really have loved talking with you. I've I've even learned so much, and um, I'll I think I'll share a picture of the tableau as well because you have it is to the yes. cutest little HD device you ever did see. And just wait because we're doing some really cool innovative stuff here that I'm not going to talk about because okay, all right, you know, all right, but we're we're gonna you know more change. to come, more to come, more to come. Change in the face of dialysis. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Thanks I for wish, having me. Uh, thank you so much for coming. At the end of every show, I wish everyone happy nursing. So happy nursing to you. Faith. Happy nursing. Yeah.